It's happening. It's today. It's today! What is up guys? Andrew here and welcome to Comic Booker. All things comics from a creator. One of my favorite programs over the last few years that I have used religiously every day, almost since it came out, is called Procreate. I love it especially since it's so geared towards illustrators. Procreate really feels like it was made for people who draw first and foremost, um, and that's why it's such a big deal for me. Procreate doesn't do major updates often. Um, usually it's maybe like once a year, twice if we're very lucky. So when an update comes, it's a big deal. Uh, and today is September 21, 2020, the release date for the new Procreate 5X which brings with it a whole slew of features which I, I just want to get into it today. Uh, I haven't opened the new update yet. I actually am going to update in a few seconds. Um, so I thought I'd do a little first impressions video and take you along for the ride. So yeah, let's check it out. Let's get started. Here we go. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. One minute, 37 seconds later. One hour later. All right, here we go. It's all done updating. Open. And here we go. All right, so first thing we see is um, that this has clearly changed. It's sort of been grouped into various new things. Ooh, wow. Okay, okay. Let's see how that works. Okay, first up is pencil filters. And this is where you get these two options now, one for the entire layer. So let's say I wanted to adjust the hue and saturation of the whole layer. I could do that easily. But um, if I wanted to just apply it as a, um, an isolated area, I can do that via the pencil tool. So that's pretty cool. If this were a painting and less of like a flatted comic style illustration, that would be a really dope thing to use. So does it matter what brush we use? Let's see. Right now I'm on medium brush, like an airbrush. But if I used like an artistic brush like this. Oh yes. Oh wow, look at that. That is amazing. That is beautiful. What if we did like a Gaussian blur? Up there it says 60%. Yeah, something extreme would work. And if I wanted to blur, oh wow. Yeah, so that's dope. I like to use Gaussian blur once in a while just for, um, you know, to lose the edges and make it less crisp and makes it feel like there's more atmosphere between you and whatever it is that's blurred. But yeah, this is dope. Pencil filters are cool. The second feature is this thing called Gradient Map that I want to check out. Gradient Map is there. Boom. And let's see how that works. So this is the mystic one. Breeze. Instant. It looks like it applies a, a set of colors to sort of the value hierarchy in your drawing. So I like this one. No. Let's do Venice. Let's do Venice. Okay, so it looks like this is the dark end and this is the light end. And this is applied like a yellow to it. Um, and I guess you can mess with that too. The mid-tones are these colors. What if I added a color? Let's add something extreme like, I don't know, red. Crazy red. Yeah, you can see it happening there. Let's put like a deep red or a magenta here. Wow. Yeah, this, this whole gradient map thing um, is really cool for like messing with base colors. If you want to like add a sense of randomness to your thing, um, I would do something like this just to give it, you know, a weird dynamic and then paint over it. Now, let's try a bunch of these other filters. One of them is Bloom. And Bloom. Ah, Bloom messes with the light end of the spectrum and really makes it glow. So anything that's light gets that sort of effect like, you know, we're in heaven. 
This one's called Glitch. And this is the artifact part of Glitch. Ooh, uh, this is Wave. And that gives you that um, EV glitch effect. This is Signal. Wow. And this is Diverge. I mean, they all like give you different types of glitches. That's beautiful. Look at that. You see how beautiful that is. Like, wow. Okay, next up is Halftone. And this is one that I can really see myself using for a lot of stuff. Especially since once in a while, like this piece, I like I, I, I like to do pieces that are a little bit retro. Let's try screen print. This is the screen print one. Whoa, crazy. Wow, see that? It's separating it into uh, CMYK. So you see black dots, that's the K. Uh, C for cyan, um, M for magenta, and then Y for the yellow. Um, newspaper. Newspaper, I think, is really for black and white stuff. Uh, but I can see myself doing this with like a baseline artwork, throwing a clipping mask on a second layer, and then just going to town coloring all these weird dots. I really like dots. This is my favorite um, of the new filters so far. This is Chromatic Aberration. And it gives you kind of that TikTok effect. <laughs> I guess that's the best way to explain it. Um, you know, you see this placement of the colors into a bands um, or wavelengths of color. You get a red, green, blue, shift. This is perspective, so, you know, depending on where you place it, you can get real. That would be super interesting, right? All the focus kind of goes to her um, with that. Uh, alternatively, you could use chromatic aberration as a displacement tool and it's just like treating the image as a flat piece. That's interesting. What I don't like, um, and I guess, you know, there's a limitation to the program. You can kind of see where the canvas ends there um, and the, you know, the glitch just has to, that's all it has to work with. So. But that's really cool. I like that. Dope. Next new feature uh, I want to demo. This is a, a drawing I'm currently working on. And um, I'm sort of, you know, halfway done with inking it. But I wanted to try the new reference companion thing. <laughs> I just don't know where it is. So, okay, there it is. So Reference Companion is a floating window. Um, in Photoshop, we have something called the Navigator um, panel, which allows you to just see the whole canvas. So if I'm zoomed in here um, and I make a radical change, let's use my, um, I was using Kyle's, Kyle T. Webster's brushes for this one. You can kind of see it updating over there as you work on it. But let's say like I'm working on this and I want not to see the whole canvas. Instead, I kind of want to do, you know, uh, something for inspiration, like a reference image. In the past, I would have done um, a swipe up and I would have put photos here on the side and just, you know, chosen a reference photo to like look at. Um, but now that's not necessary. I can just go into this panel and choose an image from my library and here I've got some inspiration so this is um, a bunch of Olivier Coipel art I just want to like emulate some of that inking and I can go in and look at that and be like oh cool like I want to do some of that cross hatching and maybe adapt the density of line, you know, that that is happening there. So this, this lets, lets me do that. And it, I love how the window kind of disappears, you know, it's just this. Um, 
let's say I just wanted to look at my own face. Ooh, what's going on there? Is my drawing on my face? Okay, that's weird. Okay, well, you can reference your face if you're making like an ugly whatever, like reference image, you know, just, you know, sometimes artists like to have a mirror um, on their table to look at uh, for expression reference. You know, the best way to do it is just use yourself. You know, so I'm like, okay. I wish you could take a picture though. Yeah, I guess that's what the selfie camera is for. So um, yeah, anyway, you can do that, you can do that, and you can do that. Okay, next up is the new Scribble integration. So now um, the usual text box has changed. You can just kind of draw. And I think this is really useful for comics, you know, um, because Scribble integration just kind of helps the whole thing. There's a little menu that pops up here. Select all, and I can just mess with it, I guess. Um, and if you need to get into like more detail, you know, there's this stuff. The old, um, the old UI elements are there. So yeah, I think this is just a nice way to, to kind of add to the existing, whoop. Um, procreate stuff, taking advantage of all the Apple iOS 14 updates. Yeah, I think it will make doing comics a lot faster, you know. Um, yeah, that's pretty cool. So yeah, that's the new Scribble integration bit. This next one, I can see maybe some people using this. Um, you can insert a private photo. So let's say I wanted to use one of my older drawings, maybe, maybe this one. So this is now on a private layer. And this private layer, I guess, doesn't show up in the video. Um, like the time lapse that you export. So I can maybe, I don't know, trace over it. My old drawings. And um, I'm not sure how I feel about this. It feels a little like, I don't know, dishonest. <laughs> like if someone were to trace a photo, um, instead of like referencing it, um, you know, using the reference layer, uh, you could do that. I don't know, you know, when you use something like this, yeah, I'm cool with um, referencing yourself, past work, or like if you wanted to insert like a sketch that you did, you took a picture of and you want to put it in Procreate, but you don't want the whole thing to be seen in your time-lapse. Let's do a time-lapse here and see what that looks like. Mm -hmm -hmm. Time-lapse, replay. Yeah, so it doesn't show the reference file under it, even though if, as you recall, I drew um, over the reference. So yeah, I guess that's a handy feature for some people. Yeah. Um, next up is this thing called Swatch Drop, which uh, in the past you had to drag from up here to change a color. Um, and you know, you would have to select a color and then drag it in just to get it that way. But now you can just like pull up anything on your palette and drop it in straight from here. Boom. And that really saves a lot of time. So I can have this up and I can just see which colors I wanna throw in. Um, it just makes it easier in general. Next up is um, a really cool feature called, um, I think it's called palette capture. Now you can like create a new palette. You know, in the past I would have to select from my photo. So I would like import something that I liked and I would like manually create a palette from it. But Procreate has uh, streamlined that and added like a new way to create a palette. And to demonstrate that again, so I'm gonna make a new palette, create new palette, new from camera. And here's a copy of my book. And I'm gonna kind of steal this palette. 
So let me just put it over here. And you can see how it's sort of live capturing stuff and summarizing it into a usable color palette. Yeah, I think that's really cool. I'm gonna do something like that. Boom. And in voila, Insta Color Palette. Alternatively, you can also make a new palette from file. Um, I don't really have a file to use right now. Or from photos. So here's a photo. Let's choose something cool. Here is um, an Alex Ross cover of the Hulk. And I want that palette. And it just immediately creates it for you. Uh, really useful. Um, I can see myself using that for a bunch of things just to get the mood in. Okay, the other new feature I'm excited about is um, just a slight update to the way Transform works. Actually, it's a huge update. So let's say I drew a circle with quick line, right? And here's my circle. And I fill that with color drop. And I want this in the center of the image, you know? Um, this is a bat signal. Yeah, let's make it yellow. It's a bat signal, right? Um, now it'll allow me to snap to grid, um, which is really cool. See that? It's sort of telling you where the middle is. You can do it this way or that way. Um, it's just really helpful. Horizontal, vertical, snapping. And there's a new rotation tool. And I can just put it in the back because it's the bad signal. So there you go. Boom. And that's just some of the new features in Procreate. Um, obviously, there's a lot. And um, I'll link to the um, developer notes down below. Uh, but I'm really looking forward to playing with um, this new update. I think they did a lot of good stuff to improve it. And uh, I'm really excited to see how it changes my work. That's all for today, guys. Uh, if you like this video, uh, if you enjoyed this content, let me know and I will make more. Anyway, hope you're all having a good one and I'll see you next time. Peace.